Welcome to Hort Tube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is a soft touch holly. This is soft touch holly, a low growing evergreen shrub. It is a newer variety of Japanese holly, and it's much more compact than Hellerai or Compacta, and it's become very popular very quickly. It's a great foundation shrub. Soft touch holly is a low growing Japanese holly. It can be kept anywhere between two and three feet in height and two to three feet in width. It just kind of grows naturally in this perfect little round ball shape. These were actually recently pruned a little bit, but we almost never have to uh, address these at all. They just kind of grow in this perfect little dome shape. Soft touch hollies can be used in zones six to nine. I wouldn't expect more than four inches of growth in a single season out of one of these, probably less than that really. And that's really the beauty of this plant is its slow growth. You're just not going to have to do a lot of maintenance to it. One of the reasons you'll see Japanese hollies planted on new homes frequently is it kind of doesn't matter which way the house is facing. These will take sun or shade. It really doesn't bother them. In the deep shade, I think it would be thinner and probably not the best choice in the deep shade. But anything where you were getting an hour or two of direct sunlight would probably be adequate to keep this full. And then it will take everything from there all the way to absolute full sun without any problems. In terms of usage of soft touch hollies, typically these are going to be used on low foundations where we have low windows. It could be the row in front of a row of plants that you have. If you had taller windows and you put something else in the back, these are great in the front. They're also nice mass planted. It has this kind of lighter green new growth on this darker green interior foliage and they look great with like purple foliage plants or any kind of evergreens that are gold or chartreuse color. They look great and mass planted with the, mass planted with those things maybe planted in front of them and that color behind them stands out a little more but really super easy and can pretty much go anywhere you wanted it to go because uh, it fits almost anywhere but especially useful on a low foundation sometimes these will get a very insignificant white flower along the stems most japanese hollies get that compact as do sky pencils do it's seems to be every other year or so and they're very insignificant not even anything to look out for in terms of planting soft touch hollies, like all Japanese hollies, you want to be sure that we're breaking the roots up on them. Uh, they can all end up fairly root bound in one of these containers. And so when you pull it out, you'll notice the roots will be matted in a circle around it. You want to pull it though some, break them up some. If it's really bad, you can actually take a knife and cut maybe three times strip from top to bottom and that will allow the roots to start going outward instead of continuing to wrap around one another. If you don't do this, in the future you will see branches on these dyes. I frequently see on soft touch Hellerai, sky pencil, and compacta hollies, all the Japanese hollies, we'll see limbs die on them one at a time. One limb here and one limb there and I think that is the result of the roots wrapping around one another and killing one another under the ground and cutting off the supply of nutrients and water to individual branches. So if you have heavy clay soils, we're going to want to mix in some sort of chunkier material like pine bark soil conditioner. That's what I'm actually growing these in. If you have sandier soils, maybe some compost or some cow manure or some peat moss would all be appropriate to hold some moisture in place. These want to just be kind of evenly moist. Most of the time on a foundation, that's kind of going to be what that space will offer them. They need to dry out between rains, so not a really, really wet place, but also not a really, really dry space. I wouldn't consider Japanese hollies extremely drought tolerant. So if it does become abnormally dry, you want to drag a water hose to them. When we plant them, we're going to want to dig the hole as if we're going to plant the whole plant into the ground. We're going to want to add some of that loose soil mixture with whatever you use, the pine bark or the compost or the cow manure or whatever it was, 50-50 with the soil that comes out of the hole. Put some of that back in the bottom of the hole. Set the plant, take it out of the pot, set the plant, break the roots up, set the plant into the hole where it's sitting up about one or two inches. Pull your soil up to the edge of that and lightly mulch. Don't cover anything that's not covered when you purchase the plant. In terms of watering, all Japanese hollies like Soft Touch or Hellerai or Compacta or Steeds or Sky Pencils, if it becomes very, very dry, you're going to want to water these. And I drag a water hose over to them and really drown the space and then let them dry out again between rains. Don't do that little bit of water every day thing. 
uh, really saturate the area I like to do, drown and forget, that's what I call it. In terms of fertilizing soft touch hollies, it could be done in the spring, a light application of azalea camellia rhododendron fertilizer or holly tone would be the organic option. These are acid loving plants, so any food for acid loving plants would be ideal. As far as pruning goes on these, these can be pruned whenever you need to. If they become larger than you need them, you can shape them anytime. They really don't require a whole lot. And if you take four or six inches off, that could almost last you a couple years. They're not the fastest growing things in the world. So really kind of easy. We just pruned these recently. We took about an inch or inch and a half off just to try to fill them out all the way around the pot. We had them a little too close together so they weren't quite as full as they normally would be. But if we had these spaced properly, we'd almost never have to prune these in the nursery. In terms of insect or disease problems on Japanese hollies, there really aren't any. We'll get the occasional chewing insect that'll chew a leaf here or chew a leaf there. It's just not that big of a deal. Deer will sample Japanese hollies for sure and can get pretty aggressive eating them at certain times of the year. So probably not a plant that I'd put out on the edge of my property if you have deer issues. So what are you waiting for? Even you can grow the low maintenance boxwood looking soft touch holly. Thank you for watching and if this video was helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also if you have any questions ask away in the comments below. Thank you for watching.